republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And I am back. It is a Wednesday morning, and I am tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And, yeah, i have so far behind. I just figured I'd give you guys an extra podcast this week. Now, I've been criticized. Uh, you know who you are. I was criticized because the last podcast was so short it was like 20 minutes long well that's the way it that's the way it's going to be sometimes it is what it is sometimes i don't have a whole lot to talk about sometimes i'm busy doing other things or sometimes like right now in the middle of this this freaking heat wave i'm sitting in the war room and it's like 120 degrees in here and honestly it's it's it doesn't cool off in here at night like at all there is no air conditioning in here if I open the windows to catch a breeze, all you're going to hear is the spray planes and the tractors and everything else that we got going on outside. Uh, so it is what it is, man. You, you get a little, you'll get a lot when it uh, when it cools off, hopefully, and I get a little bit more time. Uh, you'll get longer podcasts. Um, these uh, so far, these are just made up lately of just uh, thoughts that have crossed my mind and let me pull up my little list here we haven't been doing a whole lot here um we're kind of in the middle of a, what i call the summertime lull um it gets real hot people you know we got fair coming up we got actually our harvest has actually started and if you live in in farm country that's that's kind of a big thing and everything gets kind of everyone gets kind of busy doing that so we're kind of in the summertime lull um i got my weekly classes going on my permit classes are back up to to selling out um, so that's a good thing. Um, this weekend, I'll have a lot to report on, hopefully, because I got my final concluding uh, practical pistol slash rifle class where we work on transitions and, and running the students uh, through courses. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Fingers crossed. They said the temperatures are going to be down in the low 90s to upper 80s versus 104 or 105 that we have been having. Uh, so I, got, I, I really hope that is the, the case because... <laughs> If not, it's, I'm so tired of this heat. I want winter. I want, I want fall weather, cool weather. I wouldn't even mind a nice snow storm as of right now. I'm kind of an odd duck as in, I'm always complaining about the weather. I'm always complaining that it needs to, it needs to be the opposite of whatever it is. Well, here's the truth is I can't make it clear through a season. I'm good for about half a season and then I want it to change. I'm good for the middle of summer. I want fall. Then I want winter. So as soon as Christmas is over, I want spring. Like th that's the way it is uh, with me. Uh, I, I can't be happy. I can't find, honestly, I can't find the perfect place to live. So, so here I am. Idaho will have to do. So far, it's been pretty good. I just the weather, man. I, I can't handle this triple digit stuff anymore. The, the older I get, the less I like it, and the less I like the the real cold uh, stuff. So, I'm just gonna have to shut up and be happy i suppose because i can't control the weather I'm trying to get my notes to pop up on my phone here um one of the things uh that i was doing last week with the groups i kind of wanted to touch on a little bit was shooting one-handed right that's a skill i think that is that is often overlooked by a lot of people shooting one-handed and then shooting with your with your support hand one-handed um Everyone, everyone gets that handgun out and they go and they shoot and they use two hands and we, we, we talk about the two-handed grip. We talk about the importance of all that. We talk about using that to mitigate the recoil, but no one, you know, it's very rarely or not very often you hear, maybe it's just not a sexy topic, but you just don't hear uh, about shooting one-handed. So I've had the last um, few women's classes um, actually shoot one-handed, um, which, was, which was pretty interesting. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, one-handed. Well, there's ways to do it, right? There's ways to do it. And to where you can be pretty accurate, and it just takes practice. I tell everyone it's called, what is it called? It's called a handgun. It's not called a hands gun. Um, so, you you know, you go back and you, you know, I ask the class, so why, what's an, what's an instance, what's a case where you might actually have to shoot your handgun one-handed? And they typically say, well, what if you get shot in one of the one of your hands? And that's true. That is true. That can happen. 
Um, and so that is one way. But another way that I was thinking about the other day was if I'm in a store, if I'm in town, if I've got, uh, if I'm holding my grandson in the baby carrier, or if I'm holding my uh, a four-year-old grandson's hand while I'm in the store, right? I, I do that on my left side because I'm a right-handed shooter. And so if, if there ever is a situation that presents itself, a uh, self-defense situation where I have to get involved and I have to, and I have to draw that firearm, right? I am probably um, going to do so one-handed. I'm going to do so with my right hand and I am going to shield my grandson, guide my grandson, pull my grandson behind my back, whatever it might be, all with my left hand. So shooting one-handed uh, should be in my toolbox. It should be part of my arsenal. Like I should be pretty comfortable doing so. And then, like I said, you can switch that up and you can then focus on shooting one handed with your support hand. So those are just some skills that, sh that really shouldn't be overlooked. How do I do all this stuff one handed? How do I grip the gun? How do I, how do I manage the fact that there is, um, you know, I, I've got less, I've got less uh, um, friction on that firearm when I'm holding it one-handed. How do I mitigate that? Uh, how do I get a tighter grip? How do I get a good solid base when I'm shooting? Uh, what does that trigger feel like? I find that more, pe most people, you know, they, they are always a little sketchy when they first start doing it, but they sh actually shoot better than what they think. Why is that? Because they, it feels so funny that they slow down and they focus and they learn and they build that muscle memory. And it's the same way when you switch over to your non-dominant hand, your support hand. People uh, people are just, they freak out. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, okay. It's like you're kind of like you're learning the trigger press over again, right? That left, that, that trigger finger on that support hand hasn't ever pressed the trigger before. So it's going to feel way different. So you have to do it. You have to get good with it. You have to add that tool to the toolbox to be a well-rounded shooter and not just a well-rounded shooter as far as on the range, but to be more efficient and more prepared when it comes to defending yourself or, or your family. Uh, you know, you want to take all that guesswork out. We spend lots and lots of time focusing on the right gun and the right holster and, and all, and that stuff's re and the good right gear. And that stuff's really, really important. We can't overlook possibly having to shoot that gun one-handed. In fact, I'm thinking right now, everywhere I carry a firearm, you know, if I go to town, it's usually with family, usually with the grandkids or something, or even if my wife's right there, right? Maybe I, I put out my, my, my support hand to shield her. I'm, you know, if you sit back and think about it, I want to say nine times out of 10, you're probably shooting that. You're probably shooting that handgun in a defensive situation you're probably shooting it one-handed at least for one or two or three shots right until you can get that support hand up there depending on the the dynamics uh, of that defensive uh, situation um so it, it would be it would be a really good thing to use um I was, last year when i had to actually I had to use my little firearm uh to defend myself i didn't have to shoot anyone it was when i was running down auger falls you guys can refer back to that podcast i think it's titled the auger falls incident um but i had to to draw my my little tiny gun that i use when i go running and i had to defend myself and you know what i'm trying to think i don't believe no i did not i didn't use two hands i used one hand i pulled the, the firearm up with one hand um, and while I was moving backwards and my left hand, my support hand was out because it was dark and I'm kind of in an unfamiliar area and I had, I stuck my arm out to help kind of guide me back and let me know when I've reached a building or I was holding the bathroom door open. I was holding the bathroom door open. That's what I was doing because the door opened outwards because I'd kick it out. So that's what I was doing. So it might be something as simple as that. You might be by yourself and you still may have to fire that gun one handed. So that's not a skill to overlook. Um, you know, focus on it, pay attention to it, get good at it, get proficient with it. Um, it's it's you're only going to benefit. You're only going to benefit from it uh, in in the future. So, uh, give me a second here. My, of course, it's summertime, so Todd's got allergies. We got smoke in the air. So, my, uh, I'm getting caught in mouth already. Probably sounded really, really horrible on the microphone, and I'm not going to edit it out. Sorry. But 
I tell you, the room I'm in right now is like 110 degrees, okay? And uh, it's making it a little uh, little difficult to, to talk. I got ice water upon ice water upon ice water. And that's all I'm doing all day is drinking ice water. Let me pull up my notes here. So uh, I covered shooting one hand. It's something else I wanted to throw out there. I know he listens to the podcast, but my buddy Nathan, um, you know, I want to go back um, before I actually have just starting Patriot Defense. But before I actually started Patriot Defense as a business, I was going out and I was taking people shooting, helping them, teaching them, whatever. It wasn't a business. It was just me uh, doing uh, doing the things that I like to do. Um, just me taking people out, shooting, helping new people learn just because I enjoyed it. Well, it was when Facebook, I won't say it was Facebook was on brand new, uh, but it was still relatively new. Um, and I so I started um, a, a Facebook page. It was called Life with a Gun, or we called it LWAG for short, uh, but Life with a Gun. It was just kind of a, you know, you carry a firearm, come be on here, we'll make comments, we'll have discussions, we'll talk, we'll post funny memes and pictures and whatnot. And it, it, was, it was a good time. Um, I still remember that. That was a great, in fact, I'm trying to think that Facebook page, I may have removed it or it may just be wandering the, 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 uh, Facebook universe somewhere. I think it, I think it's shut down. Uh, but anyhow, I started doing that and I believe, and he's going to correct me. I know he'll correct me. I can't quite remember how I met him, but I think I met him on that page somehow or on a forum. I don't know. That's back in the days of forum. But anyhow, I met my, my friend Nathan and, and he helped me. I made him a moderator of that page and he kind of helped me uh, with that. And I'd never met Nathan. And then uh, a few years later, I was getting ready to start Patriot Defense. I had just had my, my new range. My first range uh, was dug out and um, he let me know that he, you know, he lives quite a ways away, but he was going to be in the area or at least close to me. He was going to run, he, you know, I invited him to come down and shoot. And so he did, and I met him for the first time. And uh, great guy. And, you know, he came down, he shot, and he left. And we've been kind of conversing ever since. We text each other. We, you know, whatever. I see him on Facebook. And anyhow, that was like, oh, that was like 10 years ago. I really was. I think it was about 10 years ago. And uh, he got a hold of me the other day and says, hey, look, we're in the area. We're, we're going down to Utah. I'm coming back your way. Uh, can I stop by? And so I gave him directions to my place. He stopped by. He brought his uh, two of his kids. And uh, we stopped. he stopped by for about an hour, hour and a half. And we, and we did some shooting. And so that was that was a lot of fun, man. He's, he's one of the OGs. Like, you know, he doesn't work for me, but he helped me with that, that first uh, Facebook page. And uh, I know I've sent Nathan a bunch of stuff to proofread, <laughs> stuff that I put out on my website. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the... I'm not the most perfect guy when it comes to punctuation or even getting across or, you know, what I want to say when, when I write stuff out. So I sent it to him and he proofread it all for me and straightened it all out. And so I do appreciate that. But, uh, Nathan, if you're listening, it was good to see you the other day. Uh, the offer's still up. You and your son need to come down and, and take a class. You just tell me when and, and, and I will, uh, I will make it happen. You just got to get yourself down here. So, I look forward to seeing Nathan again. And if he comes down again next time, I think we're going to get him and his boy on a podcast. And uh, we'll pick his brain about uh, kind of back when, uh, uh, the, the well, back when Patriot Defense was a Patriot Defense and it was life with a gun. And uh, he's got an int interesting story. Him and his son got an interesting uh, story uh, to tell. We'll see if we can get them to, to talk about one of their camping trips that they took two or three years back. So... Uh, anyhow, we will discuss that at a later time. But Nathan, if you're listening, it was good to see you. Had a great time. So that's your cue, right? That's your cue, not Nathan. It's just everyone's cue. That's get out, take some friends, get meet, meet up with some friends, go shooting, have a good time. Um, it's it, I had a lot of fun. It was hotter than heck, and it was muggy, and uh, we were all sweating to death. But it was it was a good time. So I did I did enjoy that. So I want to talk a little bit about everything that everyone's been talking about in the news. And what is that? Is the the um, the assassination attempt of Donald Trump? Um, I have, uh, you know, we sometimes we get into politics here. It's more fun to me if uh, I like it better when we kind of avoid them if we can. But we do. I do want to talk about this, and I want to. Everyone's got their own opinions on different things, and I want to just kind of throw some of my opinions out there. And that's what these are. These are opinions, right? 
Uh, so I want to throw some stuff out there. So, you know, we've got the Secret Service. We saw how the Secret Service performed, right? Whether it was an inside job or whatever, it is it is what it is. Uh, but we, the classic shot, the classic video, the, the classic memes now that are being made about what? About those, those women, uh, Secret Service agents. That one couldn't reholster her gun. She didn't really look like she knew what was happening or how to respond. The other one was doing the same kind of thing, taking her sunglasses off and on. Uh, you know, didn't know how to respond. Looked like she didn't know what was happening, what she was doing. Um, now, that's a situation that I hope they, they probably hope they're never in, that they don't ever have to perform. And I'm not picking on them just because they're, they're women. I'm going to say this goes out to anyone and everyone, especially if you're a Secret Service agent or in, the, in a, a, um, a profession where you got to use your gun, you're providing protection, all that stuff, right? You need to go out and you need to be trained. And you need to train well. Even the average Joe, if you're going to carry that firearm on your person to protect yourself or your family, you need to train. You need to draw the gun. You need to reholster the gun. You need to do all that stuff. You need to train yourself how to respond, right? Because there's certain uh, processes and procedures, you know, that, that you need to understand. Um, and by the looks of it, they did not understand those. They had not trained enough. There's a lot of stuff going around saying that they were just kind of some kind of remote office and it was like the lower end security. Maybe they'd never really done that or trained like they should because... I don't know, but anyhow, it is what it is. They, they were there. The, the, we saw what happened. Now, that's what can happen to you under stress. That's what, what can happen to you under pressure. That's why you need to train. That's why you need to train. That was a sign right there of not enough training. Now, when you're in a situation like that, sometimes stuff does break down. But if you train enough, if you give yourself enough muscle memory, create those neural pathways, you give yourself a way to react in a situation, an automatic way to react in a situation where you don't have to think about it. You don't have to. It just happens. And that's what needs to be happening if you're trying to protect the uh, uh, a president, you know, uh, a former president of the United States of America. That's you need to be that good try to be that good when you are in fact i want to say most of my people are better than that uh, uh that come and take multiple classes with me and we work on that stuff and i think they could probably perform better than the, than those two agents that uh, the is, are going all over you know around the internet the memes being made made about them it, it is what it is they just you need to practice you need to respond better you you need to teach yourself how to respond um because that was a joke that was a mess that was that is another so you look at that you look at the way they responded right and then you look at the government so secret service they work for the government they're there protecting the government so what does the government want to do the government wants to protect you right they want to take your firearms away from you because they want to provide that protection for you obviously they do a crappy job of it because look at look at how they performed under pressure for one guy and to think that they want to take your guns and then provide protection for you tell you that they will protect you the government is inept they, they can't do anything they can't do anything so you we can't you know remember this as we go ahead pay attention to who you vote for pay attention to who you elect not just presidential but all the elections because you need to keep your your, your rights you need to keep your second amendment rights uh, don't turn those and forfeit all those over to the government because we see how they perform under pressure and that's just a little bit of the way it could be you know for you uh, when they're protecting you and they're going to care about you way less than they do the president i guarantee it so let's also talk about this this shooter okay i don't have all the ins and outs of him um he was like 20 years old i believe kind of a loner they said he got bullied in school um, you know, the, the MO, the, you know, the, the whole, the same of all the other shooters, not just, uh, assassins, but, but, but school shooters, mass shooters, whatever. He fit the exact same profile as all the other shooters, right? You know, all the other shooters. And I've gone into this, me and Magnum have gone into this in depth before about where do these shooters get these high end guns? Where do they get these high end optics? Like the guys, you know, he they're twenty years old. They they he this guy still lived with his parents, uh, in his parents' basement. Um, 
yet he had all this really high-end stuff. Uh, you know, as it comes out, he, he stole the gun from his dad, but he had high-end this and high-end that, and he was able to get in and uh, uh, under, you know, just without being, well, supposedly they saw him and they didn't stop him, but he's able just to waltz right in, climb on that roof, and take a shot at the president. Well, we have school shootings where they were able to find a door that was open, magically just open, able to walk in, and do all these things. It comes to find out that this kid had, they found that he had encrypted accounts, right? He had encrypted accounts uh, from overseas. He had devices that when, you know, uh, mobile devices, computers, whatever, they found that he had used those devices and he had visited different addresses or phone numbers within the government, within certain government buildings, right? Multiple times. So, very fascinating to, to why he had all these things. So you can do your you can do the math yourself. You can make your your own uh, assumptions, your own conclusions, whatever it is you might be uh, might want to do. Right? I know what I think. I'm not going to get out there and dive into that because uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am, but maybe I am. Um, but I do want to touch on one thing. I'm kind of running through this all real quick. I'm pulling this up because I got some screenshots. So. I did post a couple memes and stuff. Um, I think one of them was it showed a picture of the shooter and said, hey, if you believe this guy pulled this off all in, on his own, um, I, I have some, some oceanfront property in New Mexico that, that I'll sell you. Ha, 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 funny meme, right? Well, it's very interesting because I have people that I know that are pro-Second Amendment. They are pro-Second Amendment. They are anti-red flag laws. They are absolutely everything. They, I mean, you think they just, they, they fall into place. I and mean, you're like, yeah, yeah, this person knows what to believe. This person knows what to believe. Until what? Until someone is attacked with a firearm, someone who they, who they hold up, who is prestigious in their eyes right that they hold up that they they disagree with being attacked and all of a sudden it's like they turn like anti second amendment so i have this is i'm going to read these i'm not going to read the person's name but i'm going to read these comments and this person likes all my second amendment posts likes my class posts you name it right um uh, he put, uh, he isn't even old enough, and he, referring to the shooter, uh, he isn't even old enough to purchase an AR, which he, he was. Uh, it says, from my understanding, his dad bought it, which his dad did buy, and he took it from his dad. And and then today they're reporting that his vehicle is full of explosives. I don't know if that's valid or not. Uh, he lived with his mommy and daddy. That is true. Uh, there's absolutely no way that they didn't know what was going on with their kid. Eh, maybe not, maybe so, I don't know. His parents, and this is this is the clincher, clincher. His parents need to be charged with murder for that man's death. They're speaking of the man in the crowd that actually caught a bullet and died, right? It's very interesting because... <sighs> Here we go. So we're, 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 we're virgin on these, re on these red flag type laws, right? I mean... And, and we're, we're virgin on the, the fact that let's punish the parents for something the kid did. Well, the kid was, he was 21, he was an, or 20, he was an adult, right? And, and, you know, I've got an 18 year old that lives at my house and I don't constantly just go into his room and check on him all the time. Um, but this kid was 20 years old, right? He ended up taking, or we'll say stealing, taking, I don't know, we'll say stealing just for the benefit of it, stealing an, a rifle from his dad ended up taking it and using it to, to try and assassinate President Trump. And he, and he, he another guy caught one of the rounds and, and died in the process. And so this person is saying that his parents should have known what was going on. His parents didn't lock the weapons up. His parents didn't do this. His parents didn't report anything. So they need to be convicted as well. They need to be in jail as well. That's that's you're you're on this ragged edge here, right? Of of punishing someone for something that they didn't do. So if my son or one of my kids, bar, and you know they were you know an, an adult because occasionally a car will break down, they need to borrow a vehicle. If if I loaned my vehicle to one of my adult children, and they took it out and they were irresponsible with it, and they they killed someone they they got into an accident it was their fault maybe they were drinking maybe who knows and they killed someone with it should i be held liable for loaning them my car because i should have known what was going on i should have known what they were doing no not at all that that, that i mean it, you can't have it both ways you're either for the second amendment 
and, and you're for all these rights or you're not. You can't just decide to all of a sudden go against uh, uh, these things because what? Because your Lord and Savior, Donald Trump, got shot at like it doesn't wait it that's not the way that it works i'm getting a little oh man i'm not going to make any friends when i say this but i'll be honest with you, you know i, I I've, I've stated in the fact that i'm not a donald trump fan i'm not a joe biden fan i'm not a kamala whoever she is fan i'm not i'm not a democrat i don't consider myself a republican i don't like either of them and in the state of idaho it doesn't matter how i vote and you can vote how you vote it i don't care it doesn't it, whatever it is what it is that, that that's how i am but this whole this whole like this cult like cult like following that 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 donald trump has this whole maga movement this whole those people those people when it gets to a point where you're trying to stomp on someone else's life you're trying to put them in prison because and hold them responsible for something that their kid did and trying to put them in jail like that's crazy that is crazy you need to step back you need to look at what you're doing and you need to go wow like like am i and am i in some kind of cult am i in some like this is weird like you're not seeing you're not seeing everything's blurry you're not seeing things correctly you're just you're like blinded by it. one minute you're for this one minute you're for that one minute you're you're for the second amendment you're not for red flag laws and the next minute you're really you're trying to institute stuff like that you're, you're trying to come in and institute crap like that and, and and punish people for something that their adult children did right how would you like it if you had a firearm in your house and 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 someone broke in and stole it and they took the firearm and they did something horrible horrible with it they shot up a school they shot someone they robbed someone they killed someone with it should you be held responsible for that no it's not your fault they broke into your house and stole your gun just like it's these parents it's not their fault this kid took the rifle right he was i think he was a member of a rifle club even and so i mean i don't know i just can't i don't the, the hold the hold that this has on these people um, is absolutely amazing to me. So let's bounce over to talk about Trump for just a second, okay? So I've listed things, I've posted stuff in the in the past, and, and people fail to to say anything about it. They fail to really acknowledge it um, of things that he said concerning the Second Amendment in the past. Things he said that he's for red flag laws, like he is for this. He wants to take the guns, take the guns first, and then and then try them later on. Work out the details and try them later on. Like he has said that. He took your bump stocks. He's. Uh, I found articles. I found videos, uh, recordings of him saying that he doesn't like suppressors. That he was going to come after the bump stocks, and he's not a fan of, of of suppressors. I mean, he has said that. So how how pro Second Amendment is he? Like I know he says that he is. People can say a lot of things, and I guarantee you, uh, you know, there's a separation of of, of elite people, like like uh, elite people elite rich people political figures whatever right they want to take your guns but th it's not that they don't like guns they don't like you having firearms right and so donald trump has gone around and he says i carry a gun i carry a gun i carry it when i need it i'm sure he does i do not doubt him i'm sure he does but is he under the assumption without telling the american people this is he under the assumption that the gun is good for him but not for you because why because he he is an elite he has grown up with a silver spoon in his mouth he was given everything he had a trust fund he had this he had that like he's not like you and me he never has been and so in his brain obviously he is an elitist he is better than you and i think that's probably the way he's going to 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 treat stuff like that and may, maybe i'm wrong i don't think i am but maybe i'm wrong now now what now we have come to to a point where someone shot at him with uh, you know he someone tried to assassinate him with an ar-15 with a firearm what's he gonna do if he gets if he gets in press in as the president which he you know, there's a good chance he will what's he gonna do is he gonna is he gonna just keep playing it off like he's played it off so far and when he gets in is like i mean he was shot at by someone with a gun right is he going to uh you know kind of teeter-totter when it comes to the second amendment now is he going to change his mind i don't know but the dude who just shot out with a with, with, with a rifle from a from common folk 
is that going to affect him and some of his 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 uh, the way he leans and the way, and some of the, his laws that he allows to pass in the future? I don't know, but we need to we need to sit there and we need to look at what he's done in the past. We need to look at who he's listening to. We need to look at the things he's said, even if he hasn't acted on them. We need to look at the things that he has said, and we need to decide really hard. Do I want to vote for this guy? And if you do, that's fine. Uh, some people aren't just a one issue in, issue voters. They they look at a whole. They look at they look at abortion. They look at all this stuff. All these all these political things, and they decide all the issues right. And they go, well, he does pretty good on he does really good on this, 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 and this. Not so good on this. This is a little wishy washy. I'm not too sure about this, but you know, we'll say you know six out of ten. Like that's my guy, and that's fine. And that's fine if that's if that if that is you. If that's the way you vote, that is fine. But I think you really need to don't lie to yourself when it comes to the Second Amendment. I'm not 100% on if he truly backs that thing or not. Is he going to be good in other aspects? Yeah, probably. But the Second Amendment, I don't know. Just know, kind of just know what you're getting into, right? You got to look at the candidates. You got to decide. You got to decide who's best for you. You got to just move on uh, from that point and stand behind your choice, right? I've, I've stand behind mine. And then you need to not look at other people and 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 chew them down if they're different than you right we all have different values we all have different things that we find important some of us are focused on firearms some of us are are focused on on abortion some of us you know uh are really lean lean into the to the religious and then the christian type stuff which i'm not 100 percent the dude's even a christian like i don't think he is uh but that's my opinion right and i'm not going to argue with anyone about what they believe in or why they're voting for who they're voting for that doesn't matter to me what matters to me is what i think and i gotta vote my conscience and my soul and my heart and that's what i'm gonna do and really honestly the only reason i'm talking about it right now is because damn it's my podcast so i'm gonna do what i want to do uh but it is what it is i have plenty of people that come and and they take my classes from me and they're trump uh supporters and backers and they're into the maga movement and i get that and that, that is fine i've got good friends in fact one of them does a podcast right that i know we totally disagree on things but guess what we're still friends we're still buddies we just don't necessarily go into depth on it he believes what he believes and i believe what i believe in and we carry on and, and that's what's good about this uh we just i just don't want to get super divisive about it um, and if you got a problem with this podcast, because there might be some people that, that, that have a problem with me t- talking about what I'm talking about on here, that's fine. You can have your problem. Like I said it's my podcast. You don't have to listen to it. I like it that you do, but you don't have to. And I need a place where I can say how I feel too. Um, I find that I can't necessarily do that on social media very much because stuff like that. I mean, this could affect my business, but social media and stuff like that. I mean, that could affect my, my, my business, right? I get up. Oh, he's not. Cause unfortunately people, a lot of people out there, they can't separate that. They, it's not a, you do you and I do me sort of thing. It's if you don't follow what I believe you're, you're a bad person, your enemy, why give you any support? Why do any of that stuff? Right. And then that's a lot of times that's where, where, what people do that. That's kind of how they conduct themselves. And so um, if I spout, spout off just a little bit on these podcasts, it is what it is. Um, this is the place that I can do it. Like I said, social media is really hard for me um, to, to say what I really feel and what I, what I really uh, believe in. So there you go. That was actually 33 minutes long. So it was 13 minutes longer than my last one. So hopefully 30 minutes is good enough for you guys. I got a class I got to go prepare for him. I'm like sweating bullets in here. Like I got to winter needs to get here i'm ready to shovel snow that that's all i'm i'm ready to shovel snow but if you like this podcast fantastic um share it with your family share it with your friends um social media you can do that that helps out the show a whole bunch uh if you didn't and you don't like this episode i I apologize don't share it don't listen to it it is what it is it's my podcast i will say and do what i want to do um if you got any comments or questions for me, you can call me, you can text me. Area code 620-794-6223. It's area code 620-794-6223. Also, a heads up, we are nearing the end of the presidential election. Like, we're getting pretty close within months. Um, and ammo prices have not increased tremendously, but I see them start to go up. The place where I buy them for 9 mil has gone up about 10 or 11 cents um uh, around and so just pay attention to that if you need some rounds need some ammo if you need to stock up now is the time i'll talk to you guys later bye